Okay, where do I wanna start? Uh, at the very beginning. If, well, it's if a very we, good place to start. If we, uh, so I promise not to hold everyone up, but seriously, all I'm getting for the first one, the, the 311 is a bullseye and not a pie chart. And so- Because you're not using the, um, you're not using the, the, the variable in SAS Studio. So okay. I'll show you exactly what you're doing wrong. Thank you. Wait, three, what? three. So load three, one, right? You can see well, my screen, correct? I can. Yeah. Okay. So I've now loaded three, one. It's an import work, right? I'm going to go and do a pie chart. So I go to tasks and graph and of course pie chart. And then I tell it I'm going to use that, right? And then I come up here and I put in the programs because those are the programs I want to run, right? <clears throat> and I'm, I'm already behind you. So I'm at work. Well, you have to choose where your wherever your data is, right? So once you double click on your data and bring it over here, you have to click on the little running icon, which then loads it. And down here, it should say what your data set name is and what the library is. The library will always be work. <clears throat> And the data set name will always be import, import one, two, three, four, just depending on how many data sets you load um, in a session, right? Every time you close the website and then open it back up, it resets. And the first data set you load will always go into work.import. The second one will go into import one, third one will go into import two, and so on and so on and so forth. So that's why mine is in work import. So when you... I'm sorry, it's interesting. You hit run after you added pie chart and mine, the run is grayed out when I add pie chart. Well, uh, no, I didn't. I ran, I hit the run on the data, oh. not on the pie chart. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, you're, the run will be grayed out until you've done enough to let it run the, the studio or to run the, the program. So you have to first load the category. Okay. And then yep. you have to go down to measure and tell it to measure by a variable. Because if you don't measure it by the variable, it's it's just gonna count up how many times each program shows up and they all show up once. Um. <clears throat> so you have to tell it to measure by a variable instead and then you have to add in the expenditure variable. Mm. And this is probably written out somewhere that I haven't found yet. So I apologize. No, I don't think I've written this out, but I, I've, I've, I've talked about it in every single session. So it, it'll be in the other videos, but that's the only place okay. you would have found it. And then when you run it, then you'll get the slices that are the proper sizes for everything. There we go. Okay. And the same goes for the bar chart, right? If you, if you don't, measure by a variable and then put in either the expenditure or the percentage variable when you do the bar chart they're all going to be equal height bar charts right so for instance i'll just show you what happens on the bar chart and i put in the program as the category and right and i'm just going to not do anything right don't add anything else and if i just run it this way all the bars have a height of one because yep. in the data set each of these words just showed up once <laughs> Then what you have to do is say, oh, no, no. I want you to measure each one by its corresponding variable. That variable is going to be, in this case, percent. And I run it. And then it gives you the different heights, right, depending on the numbers that are listed for each of them in the percent yeah. variable. Mm -hmm. OK? Yes, thank you. Now, I've said this before that um, Excel can make much prettier graphs, right? So if you wanna do your graphs in Excel, that's fine. And you know, it's always good to have good um, Excel skills. <clears throat> and as far as graphs go, you can make very um, attractive graphs in SAS, but it just takes a boatload of programming. You gotta put a lot of extra lines in there to tell it what you want it to do. And it's just not worth the time and effort to figure out how to do that. If you want pretty graphs, you're better off going to Excel, right? And they're pretty easy to make. It's just a matter of putting the data in Excel and you go into insert, the insert tab. 
and then you have all your little charts in here, right? And you just choose the uh, the bar chart or the the pie chart, and then go from there. I did I did these earlier today, and I played around with them to try and make them what I felt were kind of the the best possible bar chart and pie charts you could make. And by best possible, I mean, because this was a question a student had earlier, because one of the questions in 3.1 was you, you do the, you know, you do four graphs, you do the pie chart with just numbers and percentages and then the bar chart with numbers and percentages. And the question is at the end, you know, which one is the best? Well, you know, that's a subjective question. So first and foremost, there is no wrong answer. I don't even grade that question. I just make sure that you've answered it, you know, because there are no wrong answers because it's, it's, it's subjective, but from, you know, I want you guys to always be thinking about everything we're doing in this class from the standpoint of the reader, right? You're doing this so that you can publish something, whether that publishing is just your dissertation or whether you go on and publish something in a journal article or whatever, you always have to think about what is the best thing for the reader. And so if you're trying to present information to your reader, the number one job as a statistician is to, well, number one, never mislead your reader. So make sure that everything you present is accurate and, and obvious and clear. But number two, the, the, the golden rule is give them as much information as possible without overloading them, right? I mean, if you can give them too much information and then, and then they just, their eyes glaze over and they're like, I can't, can't figure out what the hell's going on here. But, you know, when they ask the question, what's better, the pie chart that shows the numbers or the pie chart, chart that shows percentages, my answer is, why not give them a pie chart with both? And the same thing with the bar chart. You know, the difference between a bar chart that shows numbers and a bar chart that shows percentages, well, why not give them both? So, for instance, these are the things that I came up with um, in Excel. I just ran a pie chart on the data with percentages so they can see the percentages here but then over here in my um uh, what the hell is this called it's not an index it's um insert block uh, but what's it called when you put something in a graph i can never remember what it's called the legend in the legend you know you tell it where you pull the data and all i did was in for my data values, I added in the little equals with the numbers. So each thing had its expenditure value. So now they can see that Social Security spent $852 billion. Medicare spent $821 billion. The other thing I did was I sorted my data by the values, except for other. You kind of always put other at the end. So even, even though there was more spent on other than the national debt, it makes more sense to have these um, numerically from largest to smallest, and then other is always last. And then I did the same thing down here, right? So you can see that the bars all go down and then, and then the other is there. So you can kind of see, oh, they spent the most on social security than they spent, right? So all these little things that I can do relays more information to the reader. They now can see this is the most expensive, you know, this is where the most government spending is, second most, so on and so forth. This is the least government spending. And then they also know exactly how much was spent on each one because they have the numbers down here. And then, of course, you'd have to put like a little note or something so they know what the hell these numbers mean. Because um, otherwise they'd be like, why the hell is this little equals thing in there, right? Um, they know that it's all about government spending. They know the numbers are in billions of dollars. And then they also have the percentages. They go, oh, only 7% spent on the national debt. Only, you know, 15% spent on social aid and so on and so forth. So that's what you want to strive for is give them everything, right? Give them all the information rather than just picking and, and choosing, and, that, and that's going to come back again in other homework questions where they talk about presenting the mean and the median. And they're like, well, which one's better, the mean or the median? And the answer is, well, you should always present both because they tell two slightly different stories and the reader needs the whole story. Right. So, um, so that's that. That's 3 1. Okay. What else? What's next? Hmm. Well, Any questions on three, four? Yeah. So, so here's the here's the question. So that I'm not holding everyone else up, is three, four 
better done in Excel or in SAS? It seems like histograms are better done in SAS. Yes and no. You can make a, a really great histogram in SAS, but just like any other graphical representation, it can be done very nicely in um, Excel. So here's here's my stuff in Excel. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm and again, I'm fine either way. And again, I tried to give the reader as much information as possible without overloading them. So there's all sorts of little options you can put in so they can know how many is in each category. I made sure that the bottoms were labeled so they could see the actual um, uh, classes, you know, so you could see how each class is. Now this first one, I basically did with just the insert um, and inserting a histogram tool and then, oh. play, and then playing around with some of its, um, well, it's inserting a bar chart. And, no, yeah, yeah. Histogram. Um, I, I think it was actually bar chart. And then you have to, what you have oh. to do is you have to, um, uh, you have to tell it to make the width the gaps you, you shrink the gaps to zero or something i can't remember i did this this morning I, it's either history but then the other one i did with um you go to data and the data analysis tool pack which is free but it doesn't automatically get loaded in excel so you have to load this separately if you want to use it and then there's a histogram tool in there and then you give it the input range you give it the bins uh, and then it runs it that way so there's two different ways to make it and you can see that you get fairly identical graphs. Um, the difference with this one is you can um, kind of control where the bins start and stop. Um, whereas this one, you can see that 0.72 to 0.77, it, it kind of does it on its own. So those are the two two things you can do that way and then of course in um in sas it's just as easy i mean it really is especially if you use the code the code makes it look great but, uh, okay so in sas you yeah. import three four and then you run it right yep, yep. okay and then you hit histogram yeah okay and then you know, and everybody else, please, you know, chat me or something and say, shut up, Kathy. Here's, here's, and then you got to choose, you got to choose the right data, right? So you got to make sure you yeah. choose the right data. Then you got to add in the analysis variable. So in this case, we want to use fluoride. Okay, here's my, here's my problem. Just real quickly. I still have all the stuff from 311. And I, I thought I cleared everything out. I got rid of everything. What do you mean by the stuff in 311? All of the these things are their own tabs, so it doesn't matter if they're there or not. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the labels from 31 is what's coming up. Okay. Well, then you're, it's because you're, you must be running the wrong data. You need to make sure that you're choosing the, 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 where your other data is. So when you load 34, did you hit the little running man? I did. And then so down here, it should say work and then import something. Work import to oh shit. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so you were using the wrong one, weren't you? Pro, well, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> so then when I hit histogram, it still says work import. That's why you have to click here um, on this little square and then go down and choose the proper data set. This is kind of wild because now it's not giving me to, even though it said I had to. And I will, I will just, I will stop bothering you. Yeah, see, this is weird. Import two didn't come up. That means it's not loaded. <sighs> Man, I'm doing something wrong. I'm sorry. I don't want to hold people up. Okay. First of all, number one, stop mm -hmm. apologizing. <laughs> it, all it does is it, it wastes more time, right? <laughs> you're, not, you're not wasting anybody's time. Everybody's here learning the same stuff, right? So I guarantee you other people have the same questions. Please yeah, share. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good. Please yeah, share your screen. <laughs> please keep going. Really. <laughs> See? Okay. Um, <laughs> Kathy, please share your screen. I don't. Okay. I, this is going to take me a minute because I don't. Really Down know. at the bottom, there's a little green button. Okay. From and Zoom. Now there I you go. Okay. So now it? show me where you're, bring up, there you go. Awesome. Okay. okay. Click on the three, four, please. So I, the three, four tab, click on your data tab. 
Okay. So just hit the running man again, just so I know that it's been loaded. Say this? yes, replace. Okay. Okay. Now click on where it says output data. Down here. Yep. So we just want to make sure that our data is loaded. Okay. It's all loaded. Okay. So uh -huh. we're good. Uh-huh. Okay. Now click on histogram. You know what I did wrong is I didn't go in. I, I didn't. Okay. So ignore yeah. that. But I didn't go in here. Yes. That's where you need to go. Don't do and, the down arrow. Right, right, right. Right. Don't do the down arrow. Right, and so. Yeah. So yep. then I have to remember this is two, so I need that. Yes. Now click on the plus for analysis variable. Mm -hmm. Fluoride. Oh, okay. It's supposed to just be the one. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then you want to go to appearance. Oops, nope. You sorry. don't want to do anything there. Go to appearance. Uh, appearance. There you go. And then click on bins. Oh, okay. Specify number of bins. That's how you do that. Yep. Make that seven. <sighs> and then run it. See what you get. Wait. Running man. Yep. There you is go. Wow. Isn't this so exciting? Yeah. But now I need to figure out where my screen capture is because I need to grab this now for my homework, right? Well, you need to. So you need to get your cursor right next to the right of this big black vertical thing and you can drag it and make it so stop a little bit move the cursor to the right stop a little bit more to the right there see where that's it right there now click and drag the, there you go keep doing it so you see the whole thing okay now you can see the whole thing there okay. now you have to go get your um your snipping tool on and you're on a mac so who else out there is an apple head who knows what the there's a, a keystroke or something i think to bring it up if I could get this thing to shrink. Shift command four. Command four? Shift command four. Shift command four. Okay, there you go. So now you got crosshairs. Put the crosshairs in the upper left corner, right? Right, yep. And then just drag it and then let go. And now it's oh copied it. Gosh, is this so much fun? And then if you go to your Word document, you should be able to just do Control V or whatever it is on a, on a Mac and it'll paste it. Oh, let's see. <laughs> no, but, but it's a screenshot somewhere, so. Um, Probably on your desktop. Yeah, that, yeah, that's where I save everything. So yep. yeah, I just I can't get this stupid screen to shrink so I can pull things from behind it. Oh, this is way try, more fun when you know what you're doing. Try clicking the little arrow on the upper right hand corner. The little arrow, this? Yeah. Hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's a web page, so however you shrink a web page. Or unless it's only doing this because you're oh, you know what? Are you sharing the web page instead of your screen? I think so. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, I'm yeah. So if I do there yeah. you go. Well, there we sort of went. Yeah. And then... Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go back. Again, I'm probably making you nauseous. <laughs> nope. Okay. So I think we're good on that. So um, I've got some people asking questions about 3,4C and 3,4D. All right. So 3,4C relative frequencies for each class interval. And then if one of these, okay, so relative frequencies, guys, is just frequencies divided by sample size. And so we have a sample size of 25. So all you're going to do is take your frequencies and divide by 25, which of course gives you a decimal. And then your relative frequencies, you can either list them as decimals, like I have here, or you can list them as percentages, but that's how you do relative frequencies. I can't see your screen. Are you? How, oh, you sorry. Thank you. I forgot to share it again. Yeah. So here, here's relative frequencies. Uh, um, all you'd have to do, right, if you wanted to figure out relative frequencies, is once you have the frequencies for each of um, the sections. And of course, um, if you run the the histogram function in data analysis, it creates this table for you. So it counts the frequencies for you rather than having to do it by hand. So that's just a little tip if you want to do it that way. And then you could go here. I'm just make this a little bigger so everybody can see it. Yeah. 
if you then type in here equals, come on, equals this divided by 25, and then you can format it as a percentage. And then I always say, give yourself at least two decimal places. And then if I drag this, it'll repeat that function and it'll give me all of my uh, relative frequencies uh, quick and easy. So that's how you can do it there. Um, as far as SAS is concerned, I don't know how to do relative frequencies in SAS without coding. There might be a way to do it through the menu systems. If anybody has found that, uh, let me know. But um, that's, I think, the easiest way is just do it in Excel. Okay, and then uh, 3,4-D was uh, the probability question, right? So if one of these 25 days were selected at random, what would be the chance probability that the fluoride reading would be greater than 0.9? Well, probability um, is always just basically good over total. And if you watch my videos on probability, which are all right down here in week four, I got a whole crap ton of great videos on probability. The basics of probability is good over total. Good simply means the number of things that satisfy the question that you're asking. And then total is just the total number of things that you're sampling from, right? So in this case, since we're picking one out of 25, 25 is our total. And then the good is just gonna be how many of them are greater than 90. Well, if you have your data in Excel, you can sort it very easily with the sort buttons, right? And then you can just come down here and you can count up how many are greater than 90. And in this case, there are seven of them. So your answer is seven over 25, which is 28%. Question, Michelle? No, I was just like, oh. Oh, okay. I just, I saw your name flash and I didn't know if you were trying to ask something. So yeah, it's that simple, guys. Don't overthink it. I've had students in the past think that they do seven over 25 and they get 28 and they're like, then I have to multiply that by 365 days. I'm like, no, 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 no. Is it okay to leave the answer at seven over 25 rather than put it as 28%? Um, yes, it's fine. I mean, cause I know what seven over 25 is, but um, probabilities are normally listed as uh, decimals or percentages. But yeah, seven over 25 is fine. Um, are you looking for explanations or just the different outputs we get from SAS Studio Excel? So um, as far as what I'm, I want on the homework, if you do it in Excel, um, then you could just write, you know, uh, in Excel, you know, and, and if, you're, if you're creating like tables and things, then you can just um, give some basic directions as to how you made them, right? You don't have to do a complete narrative as to everything you did, but it would just be, you know, data in Excel, uh, insert a pie chart, a 2D pie chart or whatever, you know, that kind of simple thing. Um, if you do it in SAS, then it's just, you know, uh, the pie chart uh, thing under the tasks menu, you know, something along those lines. If, really, the only thing that, that matters is if you do any kind of coding, I want to see your code um, along with your output so that if anything is wrong, I can help you figure it out. That's the big thing. If, everything else, just give a brief description of how you got what you got, <clears throat> depending on the technology that you use, because I know some people out there are even using um, SPSS and other things. So whatever you're using, just let me know. Uh, 324. All right. Well, before we get to 324, any questions on 310? I mean, relative frequencies we just talked about, so it's the same thing. And then it's just a matter of creating histograms out of it, which again, you can do in Excel or in SAS. I just showed you how to do that. And then, um, and then discuss it. So that one should be fine. But 311, I'm sure people have problems constructing a stem and leaf plot, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So. Kind of goes without saying. 310. 
run my data, check my data, make sure it's all there. Yep, that's what I'm looking, working for. Okay. I just did mine by hand, Dr. M. That's fine. It's yeah. fine. Um, but it'd be Little nice while. if you could. <laughs> the nice thing about um, doing something in SAS is you can then, you know, learn some basic coding, right? So if you just open up any any program and hit edit, it'll give you its stuff. And I just delete it all. And then go to the how-to guide and come down here. And you can see that you've got um, right here to create a stem and leaf plot, right? Here's your minor coding. So just highlight that copy it, come back to SAS, paste it. The only thing you're going to have to change is where your data is, right? Because the code says it's an import. But if you look at 310, it was put in import two. So you simply just go back here and make this import two. And you run this. And there are your stem and leaf plots for all three. And you just need this little piece here. You don't need the whole thing. And you don't want to copy it like this because this is now copying it as text. And if you paste that into your Word document, uh, well, I'll show you. It looks like crap because the every, all the, the, the page breaks are all off, right? So go back here. The, the one really unique thing about it that, that I learned and, and read in the, because I have the text, but when you turn it on its side, it looks like a histogram. Exactly. Stem. Yes. It, that's it's a, really, really cool. Yep. That's exactly it. So you see how this is all messed up when you try and paste it as text because the page isn't the same width. So you don't want to do that because it, it doesn't work. So instead, you always have to just go in and use your snippet tool. Uh, your little screen grab tool and just be sure and grab only the stem plot. I don't need all the extra crap, right? So just this, if you want to, you can add these. All those are is they're giving you um, stem totals, right? So they're telling you there are 17 total in the 710, seven stem and 29 in the six stem and so on and so forth. So you could do that, right? And then if you paste that into your Word doc, then it stays, right? It looks, it looks good. So that's all you got to do for those. So stem and oh, leaf ro plots. Rot rotate it and, and look at what it looks like. Yeah. And then that is, uh, is that unimodal then? That would be, yeah. Because you yeah. can see that it's got a 29. And it's uh, <laughs> and it's skewed skewed to the, well, it'd be skewed to the. Uh, skewed uh, to the right. Well, it would be to the left because these right. numbers are in the wrong order, right? Because oh. the okay. small number that's should right. be on the left. But yeah. Hey, we're learning statistics here. Yeah, you are. Well done. All right, so I'm, that's uh, that's ten and eleven. Sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Was eleven <laughs> built off of? Well, eleven just uses the same data from ten. Okay. That's um, all. I'll, I'll, didn't... I'll go back and watch it to figure out that part. What the first part? Three ten? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. How we how we go from how you got to the thing. <clears throat> said program one and I'll I'll just go back and watch it because because I have the histogram but then the next thing that you did that's always the thing that I miss so I'll go back and watch okay and then the question yeah go ahead Dr. Rip, in the uh in the assignment too I didn't see 11 as one of the questions I saw six questions but 11 didn't appear to be one um yeah is that I a bonus on top of 10 or what do we oh, do there? Um, it's it's a it's a it's a typo. I've been telling them to change it, and they they haven't. Yeah, if you go to the assignments tab um, and just go to the the assignment here, it doesn't list it properly. Eleven ah. eleven got left off. Yeah, I've told them to change it, and and they won't. <laughs> I've asked numerous okay. times. Um, so yeah, okay, yeah, because yeah, and completing mine, I didn't do eleven. So I'm, you know, I mean, stem and leaf plot doesn't sound like too much extra work, but it, it, it yeah. would have misled me had I not tuned in tonight, and I would not have done it. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I totally forgot that that's still a problem and they haven't fixed it. And uh, yeah, I I had this argument with my chair numerous times, going eleven was never uh, 
part of the course. And I'm like, really? Well, let me show you screen captures of the classes I taught just last year where it was there. So, um, Dr. McBride. Yes, ma'am. You can edit it yourself. I just did. Oh, okay. So it's I'm there. Trying to, I didn't see that one either. So I'm just trying to make sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's that the only one. That's the only one that's left off. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's it. It's the only one that's missing. Okay, thank you. Yep, and as far as I know, it's the only one that's missing out of any of the homework assignments that I've seen, unless they've made another change since I taught it in January, which is quite possible. But in any case, um, okay. on and to so the only go ahead the only part again is the um it's a stem and leaf plot is that is that pretty much all that's of it? all you do in 311 is you literally are just constructing okay. a stem and leaf plot from 310 can you not see my screen uh yeah it's on a phone so it's a little small oh, there you go yeah, yeah of course yeah. it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all I you're gotcha. doing yeah so um i you know god i wish i, I should have mentioned this to everybody but just go you know Go use the the homework sets that I've put in the Google Drive. It's better than looking yeah. in the modules. Yeah, and I I definitely I use the the Excel files for my data sets, and and it was labeled as three eleven, but yeah. I was confused because it had said three ten. So I and I you know saw that it was the same data set and figured well it must be three ten and yeah. mislabeled as three eleven, but uh, good enough. I will add it. Sounds good. Um, okay, like, somebody had asked for 324. Um, yeah, I, I, you probably are um, way overthinking it because all you're doing is simple summary statistics on the on the groups and then on the data as a whole. So in SAS, uh, you got to put in the data set. All right, run it. Come check it. Yeah, I got groups, cities, and rates. All right. And then we go to tasks and then under statistics, there is summary statistics. We got to choose our data set, which is the last one because I just loaded it. The analysis variable we're going to be doing is we're, we're doing it on the, on the rates, right? But when we want to look at each um, individual group, we have to have a classification variable which groups things, right? That's our, your grouping. It should be called a grouping variable. It's the same thing as classification. But anyhow, if we put the group in there as a classification variable, it's now going to group it by that. So it's going to look at all of the things that have a one for class, and then it's going to do the, the, the analysis on those. And then it's everything that has a two for class. And the nice thing about this is you could use a classica classification variable that wasn't numbers. So for instance, here, they did groups by numbers, right? One, two, three, four, and five, right? But you could have, if groups were words, then it would it would do the same thing. It's just so happens that's the kind of data we have here is their numbers, but just an FYI. Okay, options. I like to I like to change these because I, I like to get rid of all the extra crap that we don't need, right? Because the question just said mean, median, and mode for the three groups. Okay, so mean, median. And then under additional is mode. And you can see how it adds everything over here. Now, if we run this as is, like I said, you, it's it doesn't do modes properly. There are actually two modes in group two, but it only gives you the smallest one. So in order to find all of the modes, you have to either visually inspect the data and figure it out that way, run um, mode.multi, right? So if you go into Excel and do equals mode, and you can see mode.multi, and then highlight the data. Well, if it does this, it's going to do the whole group rather than individually, right? That's the bad thing about this, is you would have to do each one individually, but this would be for the whole group. And then run it you can see that you have three modes when you're looking at the data as a whole. And if you did the same thing for equals mode dot multi, but now you just highlight the ones for group two, 
then you can see there are two modes for group two. So that's one way you can get it out of Excel. If you wanted to do it in SAS, it's simply just a, a matter of um, running, where is it, right here. So this code will give you, um, in fact, if you just run this code, it will give you the mode for each group. And it'll also give it to you for um, the group as a whole. So if you click on code and do edit, you can just add it to the bottom. And then just make sure you clean it up, right? So. Um, we, by cleaning up, I mean make the, the data the proper thing. So this needs to be uh, number three, right? And then down here, this also needs to be number three. And now if we run this, it'll give us everything all together. So here's the first thing that we got out of just the normal code from the normal um, where it gave us uh, the mean and the mode. Oh, somehow I lost the median. Um, mean, mode. Median. Put the median back in there. There we go. And in fact, I'd probably just take the mode out since it doesn't do it right. All right, so there's my mean and median for everything. Group one, you can see there's no mode. Everything showed up once. Group two, you've got two modes. Both of these numbers showed up twice. Group three, this number showed up twice. And since they all showed up twice, and obviously when you put them all together, they're all gonna be equal frequency of two, so they're all going to be all three modes. And then all you would have to do at this point would be to um, run the summary statistics again on the group as a whole. So get rid of this and change your options because I somehow clicked the median off. I get rid of the mode. And then there's your mean and median for all 30 pieces of data, right? Where you, where you don't have it um, parsed out by the groups. And that's everything that you're really doing in, in uh, 24. And then they ask what measure or measures best summarizes the center of these distributions. And that's what I was talking about earlier where people are like, well, <clears throat> when do we use the mean and when do we use the median? Here's the rule of thumb. You always want to use the mean to describe the center of your data because it's the most powerful uh, descriptor of the center. It's also the one that most people understand. Uh, the only time you would use the median without the mean would be if your data was severely skewed. And then you go, okay, well, what the hell does it mean to be severely skewed? Well, there are actually ways to measure skewness. And usually it's when the number is above a certain point. But here's what I say. You should just always report both. I mean, really, there, there's no reason to not. Uh, I mean, how much extra space does it take up and whatever the hell you're you know, doing to, re to report both? And then that way, it, it gives the reader the full story. Um, the only reason why in textbooks they talk about when do we do one versus the other is they're just trying to get you to understand the difference between the two. The median is called a resistant measure, meaning it's resistant to outliers. If you have outliers in your data set, they are not going to affect the median as much as they're going to affect the mean. So the mean is not resistant to outliers. The median, however, is. So they talk about measures being resistant to outliers and not resistant to outliers. When we talk about measures of center, the median is resistant. The mean is not. The mode is resistant because outliers never have uh, multiple frequencies because if they did, they wouldn't be outliers. Then when we talk about measures of spread, i.e. how spread out your data is, those measures are usually the range, the variance and the standard deviation, which are roughly the same thing. And then the interquartile range, which I told you guys briefly about on Monday, which is just the difference between the, the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Well, as far as um, outliers are concerned, outliers definitely have a huge influence on the range. So the range becomes a terrible uh, descriptor of the spread if you have outliers. The variance and standard deviation are also um, influenced by outliers because it's part of their measurement. 
the only thing that really isn't influenced by outliers would be the IQR, the interquartile range. So that becomes our measure of spread that we would use when we have a lot of outliers. Um, so we would use the median and the IQR. Otherwise, we always use the mean and the standard deviation. And, and then again, my thing is, well, just give them all of it and let the, let the reader decide. Okay, last one, 354, oh, last two. Well, a histogram, we've already gone over how to do a histogram. We've also gone over how to change the number of bins so you can get six or seven out of it. Um, we've also seen that there is some really good code in here to make your histograms look even better if you want to use it, you know, like this one down here is really good. And you could, um, you could use that um, for, obviously this is made for the fluoride question, but you could also make it work uh, for this one. You could play around if you want to do it in 54. And then, so that's that calculating the median, the mean, that's easy. We've, we've done that. Um, compute the mean separately for each of the five groups. I've already showed you how to do that, right? By just using the grouping variable and then combine the five data sets. Well, that's where you just take the grouping variable away. Describe sorry, a method I'm, by which- I, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Mo. Sorry, I'm sorry, I cut you short. Uh, for 255, I did the, the mean separately for each groups and I yep. had a, the mean. Then I did uh, the, the B part of the question that says um, compute uh, the total mean. I was expecting that I was going to have the same uh, values for uh, B and when I added A all together, but I didn't get the same value. So I was wondering if I was wrong or not. Well, because you can't just um, take an average of the averages, you have to do a weighted average, which is what we describe in part oh. C. Because each of those groups doesn't have the same number of things in it, right? So you'd have to take the average of number one and multiply it by its sample size then take the average number two, multiply it by its size, three times its size, four times its size, five times its size, add all those together and then divide that number by the total sample size. Okay. And that's basically what we're doing in part C, right? So you're gonna take the average of this one and then what is this? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So it's gonna be the mean of group one times 20 plus the mean of group two times 23 plus the mean of group three times two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, then the plus the mean of 14, sorry, group four times 14, and then the mean of this last one, this last group times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Then you would take all of those things, right? The, the, the mean times their number, the mean times their number, add them all together, take that grand sum, that grand total, and divide it by the total number of data pieces. And I don't know how many total you have, but let's just say there's 50 of them total. Then you would take that and divide it by 50. And then that will give you the exact same thing you would have gotten um, out of B. Okay, I understand it now. Yeah, Can and you, you just got to do a weighted mean. Yeah, that's that's a little better. I, I was I was I was beating myself up over uh, just doing just having A and B numbers not match. Yeah. Can you do the, the the first two pieces in SAS? Because I've tried a couple of different things and it's yes. not working. I'm better yeah. off than I was when I emailed you Tuesday, but I'm still not quite where I need to be. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, all right, so this is 355. All right, so that goes into number four. And we go back to summary statistics and change our data to number four. Put in our analysis variable, which is expenditures. And then our classification variable is the number of members. And when you do that, that will give you the mean for each group, right? It's grouped by number of members. And there's the mean for each of those groups. Now, if you want the mean of all of them, simply all you have to do is take away the classification variable. And you can see, okay, if we add this all up, so that's 43, 59, uh, 63, 73, it looks like 83 total. So if we run it now, well, it didn't give us the end, but if we told it to, number of observations, there's all 83 of them. And that's the mean of the entire set. 
Okay. That makes perfect sense now. I don't know why I couldn't get there. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, if you look at these homework questions, you're doing a lot of the same thing over and over and over again, right? You made histograms over and over and over again. You ran summary stats over and over and over again. So you can see that there's just a couple, a couple key things that we want you to learn in SAS, and we just have you practice it with a, a, a few different data sets is what's happening with the homework. All right, any questions on any of those? We're all good. This is this is Kathy. Yeah. Um, in looking at, I believe I'm looking at the Google Drive, and this isn't true until week four. But why are some of them highlighted red? Like, should we be prepared for something really big? Google Drive, something that's highlighted red. Week four, statistics, probability, basic example, and and then the other two are highlighted red. I just I didn't. Oh 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 oh! You're talking about the videos. Yes, I'm sorry. The ones that are highlighted red are um, are simply examples. You notice, you'll notice that they all have examples in the title. Uh, so the white ones are more of a lecture video where I talk about the theory and, of course, do some examples within there. But the other ones are just simply nothing but here's four or five examples of the dash technique. Here's four or five examples of this, that, and the other. Yeah. So the red okay. ones are just example videos. Okay, and under this week, our stem is the stem and leaf under box plots. Um, I'm not sure if I talk about stem and leaf plot at all in my videos. Um, it, it's probably under displaying data, because stem and leaf plot is really just a, a way of displaying your results. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I would say it's probably under displaying data. In fact, I know if it's in anything, it's going to be under displaying data. And then, of course, if you want to know how to do it. Um, I don't think any of these videos show you how to do it, right? This one shows you how to do uh, summary stats. This one shows you how to do pie charts and bar charts. And this one shows you how to do histograms and frequencies. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should make a video on that. But I, you know, I show it every, every week. I mean, every time I teach this, we go over it. So, you know, if I, if I put them all in videos, people wouldn't have any questions left. <laughs> oh, you underestimate us. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So are there any any of these things or any more SAS stuff that you guys want to go over again? We've got about nine minutes, so I can hit something again slower. No, I think I just need to try to go through everything that I've already done and throw it out and, <laughs> and start over. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad. Hey, Lonnie, do you have your stuff up and running? You want to show me why you're getting two, two titles or have you figured that out already? Oh, no, I, I, I got, I got the right one that you just got now. 108 point some, 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 that's what I got, but I was no, just no. trying to do it uh, with my, not you, Mo, Lonnie. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't have, I do have, let's see. I don't have the code up. That's the problem. That's all right. Do you have the, the results up where you're getting the, the multiple titles? Yeah, I got one right here on my homework. All I right. Can... Go ahead and share, share your screen so we can see what the hell's going on. All right. Share, I'll pull up my word. It's right here. If you can see it, if you see my screen, analysis variable damages and damages says damages and damages. And I'm kind of like, hmm. Oh, huh. that is interesting. kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, that's weird. Um, let's see. That's uh, which question is that? I can scroll up a little Is that more. three, four or five, four? Uh, let's see. Oops. Sorry. If anyone's taking notes. Yeah, that's 54. It's, it's yep. Three, that's 54. Two. Okay. So let me see if maybe Stop sharing my there's something here. with the 54 data. I don't think there is. Output data. Yeah, it's just called damages. All right. So let me run summary stats on it and see what I get. Oh, you know what? It's it. I just noticed that it does it for expenditures. It says expenditures, expenditures when yep, I ran that's, it. 
that's the other one I got too is the expenditures. I got yeah. expenditures, expenditures. That's so weird. I wonder why it's doing that. Huh. Yeah, no idea why it does that. It's it's got to be something to do with the way it it um, it's like it, it must pick up the variable name, and then there's something else that maybe would go next to it. And when it doesn't have that, it just puts the variable name again, or, or something strange along that those lines. Because I mean, there's nothing there's nothing in here that would make it do that so yeah expenditures expenditures that's kind of funny so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about it i mean it's not wrong it obviously it's just i've never noticed it before and, and strangely enough with the you know hundreds of students that have come through the class you're the first one to mention it i thought i screwed up i was gonna try to go in and write like in the code title or something and see no if no don't worry it. about it nope don't worry about it it's it's just something that it's doing because um yeah, Steve's saying he had that as well. And it's and as you can see it, I've got it for mine as well. You know, and even if I, let's run it on something else. Let's uh let's try import five and damages. And let's see if we get damages, damages. Damages, damages. Yeah. So it's gotta be just some sort of um glitch. So or something. Something that it does. I, it's not really a glitch. I just don't know why it's doing it. Yeah, that's strange. So don't worry about it. Anything else, folks? The, do we need to change our gap width in between, um, you know, the bars yes. and the histograms to zero? Yes, if you're doing it in Excel, yes. Yeah, because okay. if they if they don't touch, it's technically not a histogram. Even though it's done through the data analysis. The histogram tool i mean it's it is a histogram yes it's just how do you visually want it yeah they they should touch okay yeah i don't oh, know yeah, why they, they always yeah they default to 150 percent i, mean, I don't so and i don't understand why it does that because that's not a histogram yeah right? i mean if i tell yeah, I mean, okay, it's a bar so chart right but, but input it's range out yeah so here's my here's my input range i got to give it the raw data and then here's my bin range right i give it the and I don't think this is going to work because I changed my bins, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it it it, it creates some rework. It's a bit tedious to, to have to do this at this point because I've already done it. But, um, you know, because it came out of the tool, it, you know, the data analysis pack. Yeah. And that's what they put it out as a, as a histogram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... I if, personally, if, you know, I, I think mean, it's I mean, much... If, it's much yeah. easier to do it in SAS with the code because you got to, you got to make all these bins yourself. You got to count up all the frequencies yourself. If you want to use, um, if you want to use the insert, you know, bar chart tool, then you got to come in here and you got to change the widths and all that crap. And, and then even if you use the histogram tool, you got to mess around with it. I just, I honestly think histograms are easier in SAS because, you know, even if you want to make it look pretty, it's pretty damn easy to just, Go in here to the and you know just use the code that we have here in the how-to guide because I mean it's it's just a matter of copying and pasting guys it's not that difficult. Yeah, yeah, I just use Excel and real life, so I've yeah, yeah, no, and Excel is yeah. great, and and to have good Excel skills is definitely something everybody should have. And so yeah, if you yeah, want to do an Excel, yeah, play around with it. Just yeah, please get rid of the gaps because that's not okay. Instagram. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'll just replace. Yeah, I'll do that and just replace the the picture paste with uh with the gaps removed. Then perfect. Very good. Thank All right. You. Yep. Anybody else? All right then. Um, don't forget uh, any if anybody showed up late and didn't hear us talking about it uh, beforehand. Um, the mini project is due at the end of next week. Uh, week three, but it is um, highly recommended that you start looking at it now because there are a lot of questions in the mini project uh, that are very similar to what we are doing right now. So you might as well start answering those questions now while it's kind of um, fresh in your mind. So for instance, if I go back to the assignments and the mini project, 
you'll see that you have to generate uh, frequency tables and cross tabulations. Those are slightly different than what we've been doing. Um, a Pareto chart that's kind of like a bar chart, but slightly different, right? Within the five number summaries, exactly what we've done. You get that in summary statistics. Side-by-side uh, -side box plot. We haven't done that yet, but histograms, we've done those, right? And then scatter mm -hmm. plots are new, right? So about a third, <clears throat> a third to half of it we've already done, or we've done this week. So you can kind of tackle those this week if you want. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for showing up. We'll see oh, you on Monday. Thank yep. you, Doc. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.